Hi, I'm Kayla and I'm the registered dietitian at Wellstar Health Place. And today I have two awesome chefs joining me to talk about our program called Eat Well. Will you guys please introduce yourselves? Absolutely. Um, this is Michael Fiki. I'm the executive chef at the Wellstar corporate office. I am delighted to be both of you here today you. to share these <laughs> amazing information with our listeners and guests and uh, Wellstar people around here. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. It is my pleasure. Hello, I'm Chef Kachow Lett. I'm the executive chef at Kennestone Cafe, and I'm very excited to be here to go over our awesome. Eat Well program with you guys. Awesome. So if you don't know what Eat Well is, it's the program that Health 365 has started, and it color codes all of our food, right? So we went through and we color coded everything that's green, yellow, and red, sort of like a stoplight kind of system. And it's a foolproof way to make it easier for you to eat better. Um, so chefs, please tell me how this program has kind of positively affected everybody. Absolutely. Um, it's common knowledge that, that eating healthy can and um, have tremendous positive impact on our well-being. And uh, I strongly believe that eating well, uh, from my experience at the Beach House uh, and all over the, the Wellstar uh, system, plays a crucial role in educating our guests about what to eat with emphasis on proper portioning to achieve positive health benefits. Awesome. And yes. Chef Kachow? The two things that I really love about the Eat Well program. First off, it's a ease of use. Uh, because we are using the stoplight system, you know when you go into my cafeteria that if you see an item and it's labeled as green, you know that that's healthy. Uh, if you see an item that's labeled yellow, you know you need to, hey, maybe stop, take a second and just think about that choice. And then if you see something red, you know you really need to put a little bit of thought into, hey, is this really worth it uh, as far as my health is concerned? The other part that I really love about this is this is not a fad diet. Uh, these are guidelines that have been uh, vetted and researched by uh, registered dietitians. Uh, here at Kennestone Hospital, we actually have a small army of dietitians <laughs> that have helped work on this program so that what you're getting is actually a healthy set of guidelines to use when it's time to eat. Thank you. Yes, it's true that a lot of dietitians have put their expertise into this and you can be you know, sure that green is the best of the best. You know, greens are the foods that you want to eat every day. Those are going to be the mm -hmm, healthiest mm -hmm. of the healthy. And, you know, we really didn't let anything sneak into this category, did we? No. No, it's the best not. stuff, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and then yellow are going to be the ones that you eat, you know, every once in a while. And then red, just as he was saying, was... Cheat day. Yeah, exactly. We want to eat those rarely. So um, we've also done things like trying to include more vegetarian options and, you know, all the bistros and cafes. You've done some things with vegetarian items as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. We have a growing vegan population uh, at Kennestone Hospital and I've been working really hard to bring in more vegan items so that we are allowing more options for everybody to be able to come in and find something that they can enjoy. Awesome. Um, and so we have prepared quite a few dishes, right? We've prepared uh, one from the green, one from the yellow, and one from the red. And so we're going to walk through each dish. The chefs are going to talk about the ingredients, you know, what makes it green, yellow, or red. Um, so you can learn. And then at the end, there may be a little quiz, so you might want to pay attention. Um, and we're going to talk about foods, and you're going to guess which color they are. So Chef Michael, will you please start with our green dishes? Absolutely. It would be my pleasure, yeah. Kayla. Um, a Mediterranean um, cuisine has always been the leader in the healthy uh, food offerings. Uh, uh, Tabbouli salad is a perfect example of a green entree. Uh, tabbouli. Absolutely. Yeah. Tabbouli uh, is made with the uh, uh, fresh parsley, the torn fresh mint leaves, diced tomatoes, green onions, yeah. the l fresh lemon <laughs> juice, the olive oil, the mm -hmm. amazing stuff. And it's all tossed up with the burgle, which is the cracked wheat, and that's what's going to give it that healthy punch in this salad, mm -hmm. slash mm -hmm. entree. And uh, we top the salad with the perfectly cooked cod fillet that is uh, citrusly packed with a, with a citrus and fresh herbs 
and a little bit of olive oil baked in the oven, finished and topped with the salad. A great meal that combined both of the goodness and the healthiness of the vegetables and the fish. So, so this is our entree here today. It's, it's so the beautiful. tabbouleh salad. <laughs> and of course the cod fillet with the fresh herbs and the lemon juice, olive oil. I am sure that this is gonna, um, it's gonna be an amazing dish for anybody who wants to taste that. Well, I think this is a perfect example too. A lot of people think that eating green is not super tasty, you know, they think it's bland and boring, but you just described so many different flavors and herbs and textures that make it not just healthy, but also taste good. Absolutely. You and know, just a note for our, our yeah. listener here, um, the, the herb, fresh herbs do substitute for everything else that is not good that I, we don't want in our plates. The right. salts and, 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 and the lard and the butter, it's amazing when you incorporate it into the protein itself, that freshness of both the protein and the herbs that would define the, the, the dish itself. Yeah, and, um, and you know, as a dietitian, I can really appreciate that it's green, but also, you know, herbs, people don't think there's a lot of nutrients, a lot of vitamins and minerals in herbs themselves because they're kind of like a green vegetable in a way. Absolutely. Um, and then the bulgur you talked about, you know, has a lot of fiber, a lot of nutrition. You've got this nice lean protein with the cod. So it looks awesome. I, I kind of want to eat it. <laughs> right now. Um, Fantastic. Now, Chef Kachow, will you show us your green dish? Well, I'd be happy to. Awesome. Here we go. We also have a citrus and herb marinated uh, grilled shrimp. Uh, I took a page from Chef Michael's yeah, book. Yummy. Uh, <laughs> great chefs think alike. Uh, so what I did was I took uh, some olive oil, 100% uh, olive oil, extra virgin, and uh, added in some orange juice and uh, basil and puree those together to make a marinade and allow my shrimp to sit overnight. Now, the reason of doing that is because of the fact that, it's like Chef Michael and Kayla have already said, a lot of people feel that, you know, when you aren't using a lot of fats, you're taking away a lot of the flavor. But, in all honesty, things like orange juice, herbs, things like that really pack a serious punch and make you not miss any of the bad stuff Absolutely. that you would normally have. Agree with that. Yeah. Now, also, uh, with the Eat Well 365 in my kitchen, what we work on a lot is cooking techniques. What I did with the shrimp is, after I skewered them, I took them and grilled them, which is a cooking technique that does not add any extra fat into the product that wasn't already there. Then, I also served this with uh, steamed brown rice. I chose brown rice because of the fact that it is minimally processed, yeah. so you have all of the nutrients that are still in there. Mm -hmm. And also, we lightly sauteed off a little bit of spinach, just 100% olive oil, and just a light sprinkle of salt just to bring the flavor out, and put that in a tower up under the shrimp. It looks super tasty. Absolutely, it looks Thank very you. nice. You know, I love Absolutely. how you described how you cook the spinach too. Uh, as a dietitian, I see a lot of my patients being like, I hate cooked spinach because they overcook it and they make it really loose mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. limp and you know, watery. And right, and also when great. you're overcooking it, you're cooking out the nutrients. So you want that to too. just lightly yeah. cook it. That way you're keeping in that flavor and you're keeping in those nutrients. Absolutely. So as you can see, you know, our green options are the best of the best. You know, they've got things like lean proteins, like fresh fruits and vegetables, grains with fiber, healthy fats, like the mm -hmm, olive oil mm -hmm. that you guys talked about. Um, so green is my favorite as a dietitian. Uh, but now we're going to talk about the yellow. So Chef Michael, if you would Absolutely. please Absolutely. It would be my pleasure yellow. to do the yellow dish with you today. And here is our prepared yellow dish for the day. Uh, basically, um, um, yellow, um, yellow, uh, the yellow dish entree selected for this uh, presentation would be the grilled chicken breast uh, with the um, uh, cumin scented um, uh, couscous and grilled asparagus spear. Ooh. Do you like asparagus spear? I love asparagus. You're going to love this <laughs> as you taste it. Um, uh, this dish uh, could easily be green entree had we not used the processed somalina, which is the um, couscous. Right. Otherwise, it would be tipped absolutely agree. Um, um, herb, uh, crusted chicken breast that is grilled and finished on the grill if you want to, or you can finish that in the oven if you want to, to a proper temperature. The couscous, of course, is cooked similarly to you, the same way you do the rice, with the exception we're not adding too much salt on it. And the guidon, I believe, that is it's less than 300 milligram per serving on yes. sodium in yeah. order to be qualified as a yellow item. And of course, who can go without a beautiful asparagus beer that's properly cooked? 
Yes. See, I love how you talked about how it could have easily been green. You know, there's lots of times when we sort of sabotage our dishes in a way, health-wise, where they started out green and then maybe we added too much salt. That's a really common thing that a lot of people do. Um, and then, you know, with the couscous, a lot of people think that couscous is its own grain, but it's actually a pasta, isn't it? It is. It is yeah. kind of somalina pasta, of course. Yeah. And um, it's the process that actually pushes from the green side into uh, the yellow sides, and that's how it's qualified as a, a, as a yellow. Awesome, thank yes. you. Yes, Chef Chow, pleasure. will you talk about your yellow yes, dish, please? Thank you. All right, here we go. Now, I chose this dish because it is a little bit trickier because of the fact that we have our whole grain bread that I've used for my turkey sandwich, but then I added mayo. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Why did you gotta now, do that? <laughs> this mayo is low fat, and we also took uh, minced garlic and add it in to give it that extra punch of flavor so you're not missing anything, believe me. And uh, we also added cheese, but now the key to the cheese to keep this dish yellow is that we use low fat 2% cheese. We didn't use the full fat right. uh, cheese. If you use full fat, then now you're off into the red zone. All right, now I paired that in with low sodium turkey. Now you mix that together with that mayo with the garlic <laughs> and now you're looking at really good stuff now the uh, other item or the side that I chose to put on here is a salad now this is also a yellow item and I know you're saying oh chef Kachow, wait a, a minute now it's a salad it's fresh vegetables there's no way that could be yellow yes it is and here's why we used iceberg lettuce as the uh, lettuce for the salad. Now, the problem that comes with iceberg lettuce, yes, it's a fresh vegetable, but it is not nutrient dense, like right. let's say your spinach leaves, your kale, exactly. uh, other darker green lettuces that you would use. And that's why I chose this, so yeah. to give a little extra education to show that there are some things you may think are green, but they might actually be yellow. Thank you. You know, yellow Absolutely. is sort of that in between where sometimes it's a little tricky to know what's yellow. So I think that both of these dishes were really good examples of some trickier things. Um, you know, going back to the iceberg lettuce too, mm -hmm. um, I always jokingly tell my patients it's crunchy water. <laughs> I like it's like green crunchy water Absolutely. in a way. <laughs> it's not that it's bad for you, but it's not that it's necessarily good for you either. It's just very neutral, just like yellow. Mm -hmm. um, so yellow in general, they are moderately processed ingredients. There may be some added sugars, and they're a little bit lower in fiber. So you want to eat those, you know, maybe every once in a while. Um, so let's move on to the red. Chef Michael, will you talk about? Um, I think your red dish. Absolutely, yep, yeah. the red dish. Uh, who doesn't like mom's potato souffle dishes? I know, that's comfort food um, right grandma's there. Grandma's <laughs> tortellini dish. Absolutely, the red, the red, the comfort food right here is, of course, the brisket, the southern style brisket that we have braised for many hours in order to break down the enzyme and bring that beautiful flavor uh, for this particular meat. We served it with the southern beans and the caramelized onions. and. Um, a little bit of a mashed potatoes goes a long way with this plate, doesn't They're it? They're so pretty. Too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the problem with this red dish, it's it's yes, it's uh, it's it's comfort food and it's great tasting, but it's the type of food that you want to stay away from as much as as possible, right. as less frequent as possible to have this. Great tasting, great ingredients, yes, but stay away from it as much as you can. Right. So you were making that brisket last night? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Now, we, can you tell me also, is there stuff in the mashed potatoes? Yes. What we yeah. do with the mashed potatoes, we actually use the the gold Yukon potatoes. Mm -hmm. And of course, we uh, we add to them the heavy cream. Ah, we add the butter to it. Gotcha. And of course, you're going to add a little bit of salt to bring that, right. that flavor profile to it. Right. And that's what automatically kicks it into the red zone. Now, if you bake that potatoes in the mm -hmm. oven with its skin on, Guess what? Now it's green. It's green. Woo! <laughs> So that's another really good example that, you know, potatoes are really demonized a lot. I feel like in the food world, everybody's like, potatoes are so bad, you know, but if you just treat them and leave them alone and keep them just natural and fresh, they can actually be a green item. But it, it's when you add those extra saturated fat ingredients, like the heavy cream, um, that makes them more of red. And, you know, a lot of red meat, uh, brisket, things like that also have a lot of saturated fat on them, um, which doesn't make it the healthiest option. 
in. Um, Chef Katow, will you talk about your red dish? Sure. Here we go. I went classic southern comfort food. These here. are both super comfort. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our southern fried chicken and we have mac and cheese and collard greens. Now, to say this is good, it definitely is, but <laughs> keep in mind that your heart and your body pays for this later on yes. down the road because you have all this added fat because I took the chicken and deep fried it, which is never good to do. Uh, the mac and cheese is just loaded with a lot of fat. Uh, it has very little nutrients whatsoever. Uh, the collard greens, while they do have nutrients in them, I added other extra items in there to give it extra flavor and that's what takes it to being red. They call uh, it Chef Enhanced flavor. Yes, right? Chef Enhanced, <laughs> Chef Enhanced. Now, uh, Kayla touched on a very good point. When these items come out of the ground, they're green. It's what we actually do to them that take them to either yellow or red. So that's where you have to be careful, and that's the main thing that you really need to kind of understand as far as the Eat Well program is concerned. It's what you're doing to it that's going to take it away from what it should be. So I have a few questions about this. Um, now, what if you, could you air fry some chicken? Would that make it a little bit healthier, right? It would definitely make it a little bit healthier yeah. if you used 100% um, olive oil. Yeah. Uh, but you also have to keep in mind that in the skin of the chicken is where you're going to have most of the fat. That's so a good point to too. take this dish, mm -hmm. uh, you could even take this actual dish and make it more close. Well, no, it would be green. So you would uh, actually debone the chicken, take the skin off, uh, and then, as she said, air fry it. Just uh, sprinkle just a touch of salt just for some seasoning, and then air fry it with 100% virgin olive oil. And now you've taken it from a red dish to a green dish. Now, there's nothing you can do with the mac and cheese. You're stuck with that. That's going to be red. Uh, and with the collard greens, uh, one thing that you could do is you could take out any added fats that you're putting in there, and instead of seasoning it with, uh, let's say, fat back or bacon or anything like right. that, you could actually season it with onion, garlic, uh, other items that are green that would actually bring the flavor out and uh, keep it in the green category. I love that. You see, so even something that's red, you know, you can still change it and alter it and still make it taste good, um, but put it back to green in a way. You know, collard greens did start out very similar to like kale or spinach, where they've got a lot of just vitamin A and C and all sorts of iron and calcium. Um, but then we cook them for a really, really long time and then mm -hmm. we put all sorts of fats on them and we sort of put them back into the red category. Um, so now that we've learned all about the green, the yellow, and the red, um, I want to do our little quiz, our Yay, little game. We're, we're gonna try and try and confuse you. <laughs> so um, I want to start with this salad. Yes. Oh, doesn't it look pretty? And you got some sides for the salad Absolutely. too, right? Yeah. Awesome. So, um, Chef Michael, tell me a little bit about what we've got here. Uh, amazing <laughs> fresh salad, just by looking at it. The organic mixed green, the, uh, the berries that are in its contents, the, the fresh segments, fruits that's in there, makes that freshness, makes that flavorful stuff it's in good. there. Oh, uh, um, but hold on, Chef. <laughs> I see something in here. <laughs> That is not green. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What is that? What are we talking about? Um, so we need to guess what color we think this is. Um, you know, should it be green? Should it be yellow? Should it be red? I don't know. What do you guys think? So I'm going to give you just a couple seconds. All right, I'm going to tell you. So it is actually what? Well, it's red, right? You think fruit and what? There's nuts and spring mix. You think all of that is green, right? But then what is this? Bacon bits. We got some bacon here. Bacon bits. <laughs> okay, so, and there's also something else on the salad, right? Of course. That the, makes it red. The blue cheese, crumbled blue cheese on this. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so. completely took it away from the green right there. Yeah. So. so I always tell my patients, too, just the word salad doesn't automatically make it healthy. A lot of people think that if it's a salad, it's healthy. But, you know, salads these days are, are not the healthiest. You know, they're covered in cheese. They're covered in bacon. They put fried stuff on them so oftentimes you know the salad isn't even the best option now chefs what could we do to make this better make oh easily first off the 
two things that you could do to take this back to green. Mm -hmm. Keep away the bacon bits. Right, take it off. And <laughs> have not put the blue cheese on there. Absolutely. Right, and now it's a beautiful green salad. The natural flavor of the dish is right there as you look at it without the cheese, without the um, added um, uh, proteins bacon. like this yeah. bacon. Um, you're doing good with that as a green item. absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, if they wanted to do a protein, what else could they put on there that you think would be good? Um, a, a chicken breast. A chicken, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or like a salmon. Um, a piece of salmon. Or roasted off garbanzo of... beans. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. I That's... like that. Okay, so this is a really good example of something that seems green but is actually red because, again, of some of the extra things we put on it. You know, bacon does have a lot of saturated fat. Um, so let's go on to our next one. Um, here, we'll take, I'll take that this off. One. Awesome. This one's a little plastic. There, yeah, put it right up here. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so you may have seen this. Um, this is one of our chicken salads. Um, so I'm gonna give you a second to guess what you think it is. Chicken salad, right? There's what, some apples in here. Is that orange zest, maybe? Yes, something citrus. Like that. Yes, yeah, citrus some citrus in there. In there. Yes. And something creamy on it, right? So what do we think that is? So you may have guessed red, but it's actually, yellow okay you think you're you know you're you're getting a little smarter you're getting it you've, you've listened to all of us all of our spiels here right and you think chicken salad there's tons of mayonnaise on it right which is usually a red ingredient um now can one of you chefs tell me why i think this is yellow i'd be happy to yeah now with this dish what we've done is we've taken uh boneless skinless chicken breast grilled it off uh let it cool and sliced it up and then we mixed it in with fresh apples uh, orange zest, which of course is fresh because it's off the orange, yeah. and also uh, low-fat mayo. That's oh. what keeps it in the yellow category, okay. not in the red category. Now, had we used the full-fat mayo, then of course we're back into the red. Awesome. So that's a really good example of something that is already red and usually red, but you can make it a little bit healthier and make it yellow, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, okay, let's go to our last one here. Freshly coming out of the oven Ooh, right now. Can I eat these? Oh. <laughs> awesome. So we've got some sweet potato wedges, right? So what do you guys think the color of these are? They're green, of course, right? It's just sweet potatoes. There's nothing wrong with a sweet potato. Now here's what most people do to mess with their sweet potato, okay? We've got some butter here, <laughs> right? And they pour the butter all over it, right? And then what else do they add? Yes, brown <laughs> sugar. Brown the sugar. brown yeah. sugar, right? And so then they sprinkle brown sugar Grandma on it. Grandma's souffles, right? <laughs> this makes me think of Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> right? And now what color do you guys think Absolutely. it is? Absolutely, then we're going into the red category. Now it's right red, now. okay? Yes. So, Another good example, when it starts off green, you can very easily take it to red by what you add to it. Sweet potatoes are super healthy, full of vitamin A and fiber, but then we add all the sugar and the saturated fat from the butter, and now we've put it to red. So. I hope that you guys have learned about how to eat healthy, how to eat well, and let those colored stars be your guide. Remember that green foods are the freshest, the least processed, less amount of sugar. You know, the yellow foods are a little moderately processed, a little lower in fiber, and then those red foods really have all those saturated fat, trans fat, and they're the most processed foods. With the least amount of nutrients. With the least, With the amount, least of amount of nutrients, exactly. Um, so if you need any more information about Eat Well, we do have brochures right right here. Um, and you can see those around our cafeterias and bistros and things like that. Um, and you can flip through them and there's lots of examples for what yellow and green and red looks like. Now also, um, if you're a Wellstar employee, uh, you do get a 25% off yes. of green items. Yes, Woo. absolutely. <laughs> okay, so that makes it you know, better to eat better. You get more of that discount. Um, so if you need any other guidance, um, you can find the Eat Well page off of eSource. You can read about the discount and look at our brochure. But thank you guys so much for joining thank me. Thank you for having us. This we was appreciate great. it. And thank now you. we're going to eat all this food. <laughs> so I hope Bye -bye. you have a great day and eat well, okay? <laughs> thank you. Live well.
Hi, I am Kayla. I am the registered dietitian at Wellstar Health Place, and I am here with two of our awesome Wellstar chefs. We have... Chef Michael Fiki, and we'll go with the introduction. And we have, yeah. <laughs> chef Kachow, the greatest chef on earth. Thank you. <laughs> okay, find your tape. Okay, and then, okay, so Kayla, maybe lean back on your left foot a little bit. Move to your left. Right there. There. I need to move in a since she bit, moved over. Just like, just like that much more. A little bit more careful. Oh, okay, look. Good. Yeah, like that. Yeah? Are we good? Yeah, that's good. Actually, Kayla, can you there. move a little bit closer to the... There you go. A little bit more there. If she's... If she's <laughs> okay, do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Are you going to tell us how, how far do we need to go? Just just introduce the first chef. Okay. And we're good. Okay. Hi, I'm Kayla, and I am the registered dietitian at Wallstar Health Place. And today I am here with two awesome chefs to talk to you about the Eat Well program. So who are you? Uh, hello, my <laughs> name is Michael Fakie. I'm the uh, executive chef at the Wellstar Corporate Office, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you for being here. And what about you? Hello, my name is <laughs> Kachow Lett. I'm the executive chef at Kennestone Hospital. Good. Awesome. 